forget CISPA, all of your packets are belong to the NSA. And Living Social gets hacked. All that and more this time on ThreatWire. Welcome to this episode of Threat Wire. I am Shannon Morse. I'm Darren Kitchen. And this is your summary of everything that is threatening security, privacy, and internet freedom. Talking about your privacy, a new cybersecurity monitoring program that legalizes internet eavesdropping was uncovered using a Freedom of Information Act request by the Electronic Privacy Information Center. And get this, the program was secretly agreed to by the Justice Department and basically provides AT&T and other ISPs immunity for violating wiretapping laws. This is done with these so-called 2511 letters you may be hearing about. It's in reference to the Wiretapping Act, or more specifically, Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 119, Section 2511 of the U.S code or quote interception and disclosure of wire oral or electronic communications prohibited while the wiretap act limits how an isp can eavesdrop the 2511 letters provide legal immunity to the likes of at&t and perhaps countless others it's really unclear how many 2511 letters were issued by the justice department now the program was initially a partnership between the nsa and the department of homeland security known as the defense industrial base cyber pilot and in 2011 was only implemented on defense contractor networks and their ISPs. And the idea here with the program was that uh, they would be provided with malware signatures to help them defend their networks, but also monitored internet traffic. And the program must have been a success since it was announced that in, in June, the program will go beyond the defense contractors. Soon the program, which has been since renamed to the Enhanced Cybersecurity Services Program, will cover critical infrastructure sectors designated by the government. So this could include anything from, you know, companies that deal with chemical, water, electrical, financial, and healthcare sectors. So if you work in one of those, expect your government to be reading your email. Now, for the program to get around the Wiretapping Act, the ISP must get consent from the user. So if you've ever read a privacy policy or an end-user license agreement, you already know it's riddled with this kind of stuff. But for example, your webmail provider may scan your email for virus attachments or you know, scrape it for contextual ads. But this is a far cry from what's rolling out in June. The Department of Homeland Security Privacy Office stated that participating company networks will include an electronic banner stating that, quote, information and data on the network may be monitored or disclosed to third parties, or quite simply that network users' communications on the network are not private. Many companies already have such login banners with disclaimers. They say things like, you know, the systems administrator may monitor this for malware and other such attacks. Now, one of the documents obtained by the FOIA request includes a PowerPoint out outlining some of the elements that the government thinks should be in this corporate login banner, such as, well, expressly that it expressly covers monitoring of data and communications in transit, that the information may dis be disclosed for any purpose to the government, and that monitoring can be for any purpose. Now, it goes on to state that the monitoring can even be done by either the company or a third party authorized by the company. So, hooray for eavesdropping, uh, you know, outsourcing. Creepy. And it also covers the use of uh, including, you know, if you use the system for personal use, say you check your Facebook on your lunch break or anything like that. Not that you should be checking your Facebook on your lunch break. But we did anyway, it anyway. Yeah, but it covers that. Now, ultimately, it states that users have no expectation of privacy. So the program seems to boil down to this. It's a broad disclaimer coupled with ISP immunity for a catch-all government monitoring. And here's the thing. It works both ways. Even if you don't work for a company designated by the government as critical infrastructure, if you correspond with one that does, or say like you're friends with someone someone who does on a social network and they check that network while at work, well, now your information is in the hands of the NSA and the DHS. So if you're thinking this sounds a little bit like CISPA, the Cyber Intelligence and Sharing Protection Act that just passed in the House, well, bingo. The same immunity would apply to AT&T, to Verizon, to Google, to anyone. And it seems that both the NSA, the DHS, and the DOD They've been in the meetings with the House of Intelligence Committee who drafted CISPA. Hooray! To think about. Everybody has all of our internets. Yeah, pretty yeah, much is what it comes no down fine. to. Well, guess what? Our hack of the day today comes from Living Social, the online daily deal site. Names, email addresses, 
date of births, and encrypted passwords were all stolen. Now, while the passwords were encrypted and salted, which is basically a uh, more encrypted version of a encrypted password. It's, it's harder to reverse. Yeah, it's harder to, for to a hacker to reverse it, figure it out, hash. decode it. Yeah. Well, Living St Social has still asked all of the 50 million of its customers to change their passwords, myself included. Now, since they were using a popular encryption technique called SHA-1, which is n probably the easier version of encryption for a thief to actually decrypt, um, they could unencrypt it over time. Living Social has upped their encryption for passwords and no credit card data was stolen. Those servers were safe, but still. See, this is the problem: is Come you never on, know people. when you sign up with a company what kind of encryption. What encryption using. are you using? Are you using, using Bcrypt? Are you using SHA-1? Are MD5? you actually salting those encryptions, or yeah. are you just hashing them for yeah. anybody to figure out with a rainbow table? So you don't even need the government to monitor your internet, anyway. <laughs> You got hackers and Brings us to the comment monitoring it for you. Last week, we asked you that given the mainstream dependence on social media for news, what do you believe is Twitter's responsibility in protecting its users? And we have two comments this week. One of them comes from Darren Kyle. Darren who, Kyle. Darren Kyle, who writes, <laughs> Twitter, in my opinion, has no responsibility to protect users' data. If you put information on Twitter's website, it becomes Twitter's property. Moral of the story is, don't put stuff on Twitter or, indeed, any part of the internet if you don't want others to see it. We also have a comment from Malkut Safra who wrote, Twitter's absolutely has a responsibility to do whatever it can to protect its users. On the other hand, maybe the US government shouldn't have a responsibility to rely so much on insecure social media. Also, kittens. Yay! Indeed, kittens. It seems that security, much like privacy though, is only available for those willing to fight for it. I'm willing to fight for it. And I have to agree with Malkut. Hmm. Myself. Mm -hmm. I, I Anything that I put on Twitter, I expect them to have some kind of protection for me. I figure Twitter is a public forum, but yeah. difference between privacy and security in this case. I'm okay with people what reading my week? tweets, but not my passwords. <laughs> now, this week we'd like to know, given the latest findings about wiretapping immunity on critical infrastructure networks and the likes of CISPA, do you feel that a reasonable expectation of privacy is inherent to the internet? Is the internet like a public park where you can be photographed or a private home? And where do you draw that line? Now remember, you can find all the ways to subscribe over at threatwire.org and you can get, get involved in our Google Plus community. That's where the conversation continues all week. And with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you on the internet. Yay, kitties.